Ink Ribbon. Resident Evil 4 became the remake we never knew we wanted, taking everything from the original and expanding on it as much as possible. And today, I thought we'd take a deep dive into every secret, easter egg, and hidden detail this game has to offer. This has been a video in the making for a while now, but I wanted to be as absolutely thorough as possible, which is why I waited for all the DLC and extra content to arrive, excluding VR mode. Still excited for that. But until then, here are the secrets, easter eggs, and lore of Resident Evil 4 Remake. Number 10 Changes Since this is a remake, I thought it would be fun to just quickly go over everything that was changed from the original so we can appreciate how far this game has come. First is the enhanced combat system, which now allows moving while aiming, as well as knife takedowns, and the all-new parrying system, which allows you to counter-attack enemies to damage or stun them. There's also the option to sneak around enemies with stealth mechanics and crouching. QTE events have been removed, instead replaced with normal gameplay prompts in some situations. Expanding on the single-player merchant missions where Leon shoots the blue medallions, there are now several missions throughout the campaign, ranging in tasks. The enhanced treasure system now allows different combination of gemstones, which can provide a bonus depending on which gems are used. The attaché case is now customizable, with both the case itself being able to provide certain perks as well as the attachable charms that can tailor bonuses to your preferred playing style. The story and characters have been expanded and reworked, which I will get more into later, and a lot of general quality of life improvements here and there. Number 9 Extra Content Along with the main game comes the addition of all the extra content from the original game. First we have the new and expanded Mercenaries, which features Leon, Krauser, Hunk, and the addition of Luis. Each character now has a special ability called Mayhem Mode, that they can activate for a short period of time, just like Mercenaries Mode in Resident Evil Village. Leon's Mayhem Mode increases all his stats and abilities, focusing on speed and attack power, Luis can set down dynamite, which can blow up enemies and has no effect on him. Krauser mutates and gains the ability to use his arm attack. And Hunk gains infinite ammo for his submachine gun. After a free update, we were given four new Mercenaries characters, consisting of Gangster Leon, Ada, Ada in a dress, and Wesker. Aside from the new weapon loadouts, they also have their own mayhem modes. Sort of. Leon and both Ada versions have the same mayhem mode, which is just increased attack power and speed, but Wesker gets the unique ability to unleash a series of devastating hand-to-hand -hand combo attacks that can destroy enemies with ease. The other big addition was the separate ways scenario. It wasn't included in the base game, instead being added as paid DLC. In this campaign, you play as Ada, and you get to see what she was doing during Leon's campaign. Aside from being added in, this campaign also brings back several moments that were missing in the remake, such as the cable car section, the boss fight with U3, and even the large spinning drill. Another thing that was not only added but expanded was the laser room hallway, which seems to take inspiration from both the original Resident Evil 4 and the first Resident Evil film. You can see this if you let Ada get killed by the lasers. We also see the brief appearance of an all-new creature, named Martiniso. This was a test subject that was deemed a failure, having even more regenerative abilities than the Regenerators, combined with the strength of El Gigante, but its lack of intelligence led it to escape and be impossible to contain. Thankfully, Ada discovers his weakness. Lasers. Overall, Ada's campaign spans seven chapters and is about the length of a classic Resident Evil game. It also features new gameplay elements, mostly revolving around Ada's grapple gun, which can be used to melee enemies from a distance, pull shields away, and more. 
If you're one of the few people who's still not sure it's worth the $10 price tag, I can assure you, it is. It's almost like getting a second game, with not only new gameplay, but new cutscenes and story. Number 8 Enemies and Tactics Due to the complexity of the combat system, I thought it would be worth including a section about each enemy you encounter as well as tips and strategies for each enemy because they all seem to have some sort of exploitable weakness or tactic. Ganado, which translates to livestock or cattle, are the most common enemy and they pretty much all have the same tactic, parry and dodge while aiming for the head. Sometimes they will begin to thrash and unless you take them out quickly they will get back up as a desnucado which is Spanish for broken neck or necklace, and they are essentially crimson heads now. Chainsaw ganado should always be kept at a distance for obvious reasons, and their weak spot is also their head. If you need treasure, they usually drop a gemstone when defeated. You can parry their chainsaw attacks as a last resort, but it deals massive damage to your knife, usually breaking it. It's also worth mentioning that if you climb the clock tower in the village, as long as you don't move, you can take out the villagers one by one. Once you've killed 15 of them, the bell will ring and you can move on. Really handy for professional runs if you are struggling. The cultists are stronger ganados, but watch out for the scythe wielders, as the timing for parrying is very tight and they can throw them from afar and really cause problems for even the best players. Brutes come in two flavors, hammer and crossbow, and the weak spots are also their heads. Dodging the hammer is the way to go, giving you a window of attack. For crossbow brutes, if you shoot the gun while he's reloading it, it will explode and deal a lot of damage while also stunning them. Plaga Guardaña, or Guard Plaga, is pretty simple. The Plaga is the weak spot, keep distance to avoid being spanked. Plaga Mandibula, or Jaw Plaga, is pretty self-explanatory, except these can kill you in one hit, so really try to stay away from them. They're also kind of armored, so wait until they open their mouths and shoot the red weak spots inside. Plaga Araña, or Spider Plaga, are as fast as they are annoying. Once latched on, they will drastically speed up enemies they control. Shoot them to remove them, then kill them. Colmilos, or Fangs, are fast but weak. If you shoot them as they charge towards you, you deal extra damage, usually killing them in one hit. The Plaga controlling Armadura, or Armor, can be stunned by shooting them, and then a melee attack will expose them, allowing you to continue to shoot them or just use a flash grenade to kill them instantly. Novistadors are fast but easy to kill. Just watch out for the ones that are camouflaged, as they're basically guaranteed to grab you if you get close to them. For regenerators, as you may know, you can acquire a bioscope to see the plagas inside of them and take them out. You can also shoot holes in them to visually expose them, but one of the best ways you can deal with them is actually with a knife, believe it or not. Once parried, just go crazy with the knife until you see a parasite exposed and focus on them one at a time until it's dead. And just as a last tip for separate ways, when the black robe splits into multiple entities, you can see the real one easily with a thermal scope or just use a flash grenade to make them all disappear for a while. I hope all that info helps. Number 7 Merchant Goodies Fans rejoiced when the merchant returned once again, and not only did he come back, but he was also improved quite a bit. First of all, let's go into the merchant's design. Originally, the goal was to have a character that served as a shop mechanic, but was also the physical embodiment of a shop himself, which is why his jacket is full of wares. Designed by artist Masaki Yamanaka, his design was actually inspired by the villain character Neptune Man from the manga series Kinikuman, who would collect opponents' masks and keep them in his coat. The shooting range the merchant provides has been expanded, now providing much more strategic ways of getting high scores, while still being as difficult as ever, but rewarding you with silver or gold coins to use in order to hopefully get some useful charms. Speaking of charms, it's worth mentioning that the charms are predetermined when you start a game, so if you save the game first, you can put in coins to try to get the best charms, and if you get one you don't like, just reload your save and try a different combination. The merchant has a total of 19 requests you can do, and you can gain a maximum of 84 spinels to trade in his shop for some very useful things. The remake now has a lot more points of no return than the original, 
But if you aren't sure, the merchant will usually let you know when it's your last chance to visit his current shop before progressing. Ooh, might want to take care of any leftover errands before going this way. It'd be a shame to live the rest of your life wondering, what if? Am I right? Be sure to check out my 25 facts video about the merchant for a lot more info on him. Well done. Number 6 Unlockables as with any Resident Evil game, Resident Evil 4 includes a ton of unlockable content. And I just want to mention a very important detail, anything requiring an S plus rank means you need to play a new game on a fresh save file. So with that, first are bonus weapons. First is the Primal Knife, which has the exclusive upgrade ability of infinite durability, which means it will never break. To unlock it, simply shoot all 16 Castellan figures throughout the game, with one in each chapter. If you need to keep track, you'll know that you got them if you see a special symbol for each chapter in your results menu. It's also worth mentioning that this knife is the one that Leon wielded in the original game. Next is the hand cannon, which is simply unlocked by completing mercenaries with an S rank on each level. This gun is as powerful as it is inaccurate, but it does have the upgradable bonus of infinite ammo. Returning is also the Chicago typewriter, which is unlocked by completing the game on professional with an A rank. This also has the ability to unlock infinite ammo. Next we have costumes for the main game, which aside from purchased DLC ones are limited. Leon has his Mafia outfit once again if you beat the campaign once, beating the game on hardcore with at least an A rank. You can also unlock armor for Ashley by beating the game on hardcore with at least an A rank. This one is insanely useful because it basically makes Ashley invincible. If enemies try to pick her up, they will drop her because she is too heavy. And you can shoot her, they can shoot her, she can blow up, and she'll be just fine. There's also a secret costume you can unlock, but it's going to take a lot of skill. If you can get an S plus rank on every mercenaries level with every character, Leon can wear his RPD uniform once again. Newly added to Resident Evil 4 are accessories, with some of them being just for fun, but also having some that grant special abilities which of course are harder to unlock. The Wolf Tail greatly increases Leon's melee attack power and can be unlocked by beating the game on assisted difficulty with an S+. The Deer Antlers increase the attack power of Leon's knife and are unlocked by beating the game on standard with S+. The Chicken Hat may look silly, but it allows Leon to take far less damage from enemies and is unlocked by beating the game on hardcore with an S+. And the highest honor goes to the Cat Ears, which grant Leon infinite ammo. To unlock these, simply beat the game on Professional with an S+. With the addition of separate ways came a slew of even more unlockables. By completing the campaign once, you unlock two outfits for Ada, Luis's original outfit, and Wesker's original outfit. Then there's the two unlockable weapons for Ada, being the Elite Knife, which you get for completing all the merchant's requests, and it's worth mentioning you don't have to do them all in one playthrough, and just like Leon, it has the ability to upgrade for infinite durability. Then there's the Chicago Sweeper, unlocked by beating separate ways on Professional with an A rank. Ada has about 12 accessories, but the special ones worth unlocking are ones like the Bear Hat, which increases knife attack power and is unlocked by getting an S plus rank on Standard. Then there's the Chicken Hat, just like Leon, it cuts down how much damage Ada takes and is unlocked by beating Hardcore with an S plus and the cat set, granting Ada infinite ammo, is unlocked by beating her campaign on Professional with an S plus rank. Got something that might interest you. <laughs> if you're a Resident Evil fan and looking to get a new PC, look no further than the custom PCs I helped design with today's sponsor, ABA Direct. These come in Outbreak, Green Herb, and T-Virus. To see the collection, visit avadirect.com slash inkribbon and be sure to use code inkribbon for 10% off your order. Links are down below. <laughs> Thank you. Number 5. Game Skips. Most of the glitch exploits in this game have been patched, but there are still a few fun things to do that are actually intended to be there, which can help speed up game playthroughs and make some of the moments a little less stressful. First is skipping the entire village encounter. This can only be done on New Game Plus as you need the sniper rifle, but aiming over here and shooting the bell will ring it early and send the villagers straight to bingo. Huh? 
Next is during the helicopter section, where you can take out the large turret by simply chucking a large grenade at it. This can also work with several regular grenades. The next one is hinted at with the merchant side quest, The Disgrace of the Salazar Family, where you have to throw an egg at a portrait of Salazar. During his boss fight, if Salazar is giving you a hard time, it's important to know that for some reason, hitting him with a golden egg will take 70% of his health, making the fight much easier. You can get one guaranteed golden egg on the little chicken island during the boat driving section on the lake. In the section where Leon and Luis use the TNT, you can use the rocket to clear the rubble. Be careful though because the rolling debris will kill Leon if he doesn't move out of the way. And last is once again using grenades. You can destroy the wall and allow Ashley to smash it with only one swing of the wrecking ball. This section was a lot longer when I originally wrote this, but Capcom patched out so many skips, like the one where players were able to use the scope to push Leon through certain gates and skip some sections of the game, as well as hiding from the Verdugo boss while waiting for the elevator. In separate ways, during the burning section where Ada follows Luis, there's a shortcut if you duck under the table to your right. Ada can take out laser turrets using her explosive arrows, allowing her to get a treasure without taking damage. It's also worth mentioning there's a destructible wall that allows Ada to bypass a section near the laser rooms, too. Number 4 Secrets Okay, okay, now, what you clicked on this video for, let's dig into the things that are actually secrets. In the valley, there's a bridge in the middle of the combat encounter with the Ganados that is able to be destroyed by Leon, but be careful because they can destroy it too, causing Leon to fall to his death. Ashley will react to her phone if you pick it up in front of her. Seriously? I just bought this. Leon will shield his eyes when there's a flash grenade going off, but if he's wearing any sunglasses, he's unaffected. In chapter 12, if you make your way up to the throne room, you can take a seat on the throne chair, just like you could in the original. Some fans have speculated that this may be a nod to Dracula in Castlevania Symphony of the Night, but I'll leave that for you to decide. In chapters 4, 9, and 19, you can find the extremely rare Rhinoceros Beetle Treasure, which you can either consume just like a yellow herb, or sell it to the merchant for 10,000 pesetas each. They are extremely hard to find, and you have to get very close in order to pick them up. You can also find one right behind Ashley at the end of the separate way scenario. Reloading the hand cannon and Chicago Sweeper while in the Mafia outfit will make Leon do some unique animations. In Chapter 4, after getting the church insignia, you can go back to the lair of El Gigante for a hidden file containing a log of events that detail the evolution and progress of the monster. Just like in the original, you can shoot Salazar's speaker to cut him off. There's a bit of extra dialogue if you bring Ashley down to see the animal. Was this the animal? No, you can't keep him. Yeah, that's too bad. Luis will eventually kill all enemies if you wait long enough, even the Chainsaw Ganados. When you get to the lake, if you stand on the dock and shoot the water, you'll get a surprise. I didn't know where else to put this, but just a nice detail worth mentioning. When playing as Ashley and unlocking the chest using different keys, if you pay attention, you'll notice that the motif of the lock matches the motif of the key. Like this one, which is a bird-themed lock and requires the bird-themed key. In the section where Ashley holds up the bridge, if you manage to make it back while a regenerator is still following you, Ashley will dispose of him for you. I'm sure it's obvious at this point to most players, but the giant fire-breathing Salazar statue has a conveniently placed explosive tank in the back of its head. 
Shooting it will do exactly what you'd expect. Did you know you can do tricks on the jet ski? Now turning to separate ways. If Ada heads back towards the village when she's supposed to head towards the church, the door will be locked, but you will actually be able to hear Leon fighting the villagers. It won't open. If you get to the roof of the church, Ada can hear Ashley crying. Also, did you know you can change the color of Ada's iris scanner? When villagers are heading back towards the church after the bell rings, Ada can take them all out. You'll notice the first ganado in the group is wearing glasses that you can collect and sell. There's also a ganado wearing Krauser's beret later in the game, which, if you kill him, you can take it and also sell it. And in Chapter 3, when backtracking through the rain, Ada can find one golden chicken egg on a bed in the village. Number 3 Easter Eggs can't do a video like this without mentioning some easter eggs, and this entry in the series has a lot of them. So we'll start with Leon's handgun. Leon's signature gun, the SG-09R, has Kendo engraved on the side. This is in reference to Robert Kendo, who provided custom guns to the STARS team, including the famous Samurai Edge pistols. The Magnum named after Killer7 refers to the Capcom game of the same name, which was released around the same time as the original Resident Evil 4. The music that plays in the shooting gallery is from the introductory cutscene of the original game. If you have the DLC to swap the original soundtrack, the title screen will also do the classic voiceover. Ashley will give a small nod to Jill and the original game with this voice line. I'm pretty much a master of unlocking. She will also give a nod to the original Resident Evil 4 in the shooting range, where she will sit on the barrel just like the promotional art. In Ashley's segment, a spooky jump scare happens when a deer head falls off the wall. This is just my speculation, but it may be a reference to the cancelled E3 build where the same thing happens to Leon. Just like the original, the unlockable Matilda handgun is a direct reference to the film Leon the Professional, being the name of Natalie Portman's character. Subsequently, this is also the reason for the hardest difficulty being called Professional. All of the charms are models from the original Resident Evil 4. One of these includes the Striker shotgun, which increases your running speed. This is a reference to the infamous Ditman glitch you could do in the original that allowed Leon to run super fast, walk through walls, and basically break the game, all done using the Striker shotgun. This isn't exactly an easter egg, but I wasn't sure where else to mention it. I noticed the Magnum ammo is called Ballistics. Do whatever you want with that information. How rude! And lastly, on Huddigan's computer, once you've beaten the game, you can see one of her post-it notes has a reminder to go to bingo written on it. Number 2 Cut Content Part of the reason I waited so long to make this video was to see if any additional content was released, and with the addition of separate ways, we got most of the things that were missing, such as the boss fight with U3 and the laser hallway, but even after all that, we're still missing a few things from the original that were cut in some form or another, so I thought I'd just quickly mention them here. First is grenades. While we got the addition of the very useful heavy grenades, the incendiary grenades were removed presumably for game design reasons. <laughs> I didn't realize until researching this video, but there's no sections where Leon is running from boulders, though there is one moment where you can dodge one. Another gameplay feature removed was the ability to shoot holes in doors, which was admittedly a very cool and useful feature. Probably one of the biggest complaints I've seen online is the infamous missing weapon, the PRL. In case you don't know what that is, it's a special gun that was added to the PS2 and subsequent versions that would basically kill everything on screen with one shot. 
It was probably removed because it was the most overpowered weapon to ever appear in a Resident Evil game ever. The section with Ashley where you choose one of the two paths was removed, defaulting to the path of the Chainsaw Sisters. Also missing are some of the areas in the game like the Dragon Lava Room, the Clock Tower section with the jammed cogs, the section where Ashley drives the construction vehicle thing, and most tragically, no more using the claw machine to pick up and drop enemies into the garbage. Number one. Development. Yasuhiro Ampo, the director, didn't want to remake the original Resident Evil 4 because he considered it a masterpiece. But after replaying it, he decided to go around Capcom and ask employees what their thoughts were on a possible remake, and the general consensus was that even though the original was an amazing game, it could still be improved on in several ways. And that is when the ball got rolling. The first thing they saw that would be improved was the gameplay, wanting it to be more modernized and more accessible to gamers. One of the very first things removed was QTEs, or quick time events, as those were simply just no longer enjoyed by gamers. Instead of simply removing them, the team thought hard about how to replace them, since some moments in the original relied on it, such as the Krauser knife fight. This is actually where the idea for a parrying system came from, which was not only going to be used for the Krauser fight, but also expanded into a core game mechanic. Another change the team wanted was to remove the linear gameplay that Resident Evil had become known for. Instead of just fighting enemies, the player was now given the choice of utilizing stealth. This was brought on by expanding the moments in the original where Leon would walk up to an enemy and catch them off guard since they hadn't seen him yet. Now players could fight, or sneak around, or a combination of the two, and it provided a lot more variety and choice. This is also the sole reason for the bolt thrower being in the game, since it's the only weapon that doesn't make a sound when you fire it. And I don't normally interject my own opinions in these videos, but I think this was such a missed opportunity for having silencers. Remember in Mercenaries in the original, Wesker had a silenced handgun? I know that silencers don't work that way in real life, like they do in games, but it could have been a really cool extra mechanic or playstyle. Just saying. Development started back in 2021, led by Capcom's Division 1 team, with many of the staff having worked on the Resident Evil 2 remake. The team was then split into three groups to work on the village, the castle, and the island sections of the game. While there was obviously a lot to improve on, Ashley was actually one of the biggest things the story team focused on, mainly rewriting her to always want to stay with Leon, since realistically she'd never want to separate from him, and this is also the reason why the wait and hide commands were removed. As of making this video, we don't know what's next for Resident Evil, but it's likely that there is a new Resident Evil game being developed as we speak. Will it be another remake, or will we be getting a new entry in the series? Only time will tell. If you enjoyed this video, then please use your knife to parry that like button, and feel free to subscribe for more Resident Evil content just like this. Until next time, I'm Kai Morgan, and as always, thanks for watching Ink Ribbon. And a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Your extra support means the world to me and helps me keep making content for you guys.